Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Francis Mackworth Live. It's so good to be with you. If you've not met before, my name's Andy. I'm the church leader here at St. Francis, and I need to wish you um, a happy Easter. Although if you were in church and kind of a traditional style church, it wouldn't be wishing you a happy Easter. It would actually be, we, I would say, Christ is risen. And then the congregation would respond, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so actually at the nine o'clock, that's what we did this morning. Um, but uh, you're not here and I'm not with you in person, so we won't, we won't do that. But um, yeah, instead of happy Easter, we say Christ is risen. And I hope your Sunday has been good. We have had a nine o'clock traditional service where about 30 of us gathered and we celebrated, celebrated Jesus being alive. We remembered his death uh, by taking communion together and we celebrated and then at the 10 30 we gathered um from a modern style service for a number of guests with us it was really lovely to see people that hadn't been to a service at st francis before checking out things there was a big um if you look on our social media stories you'll see uh we had a big balloon drop up at the front and at the end of the service we let 350 balloons out and we parted and just celebrated that jesus is alive and i'm going to share a little bit more about what i said during that but um if you've got any questions, you've got any prayer requests, please put them in the comments. Michelle has said happy Easter one and all. Um, thank you, Michelle. We missed you this morning, but so good that you can join us online. Um, we're going to pray in a little bit. So as I said, if you if you want us to pray for anything for you, you can put that up. Or if you want to just comment, uh, I'll, I'll put some of those up as well from time to time. As a church, we have a vision to be a light on the hill for our estate and we work that out in three ways we talk about worshiping god we talk about growing community and we talk about serving our estate and so whether it's on sundays or whether it's throughout the week this week we've had um with little house nursery in we had rygate juniors in we went in and did assembly for rygate infants um i know there's been all sorts of different things going on i know peter's done some services in two of our local care homes um a few of us were out handing out easter eggs yesterday and um yeah and also a few of us helped out with the garden down at by the carp as well so not just on Sundays, but throughout the week, we want to worship God, we want to grow community, and we want to serve our estate. And I know that some people watch this to catch up. So if that's you, uh, well done for watching in the future. If you're watching because you're ill or for whatever reason couldn't make this morning, well done. Again, it's really good to be with you. But if you're watching this because you're thinking, I've seen some stuff on social media, but I'm not sure, uh, you know, I'm a little bit nervous about walking into church, then hopefully this gives you a taste of what the 1030 is like we're going to have a couple of songs we're going to read a bit of the bible i'm going to unpack some of that with you um but we have people with us all the time who are new to church they're not used to being there they've got all kinds of questions and so we say there's no such thing as a silly question so as we uh, move on, I'm going to read a little bit from the book of Zephaniah. It's a, a book written hundreds of years before Jesus was born. He was a prophet. And um, yeah, it just kind of speaks of some of the um, the uplifting stuff uh, about what God was going to do. It says, people of Zion sing, Israel shout loudly, people of Jerusalem be glad, let your hearts be full of joy. The Lord has stopped punishing you, he has made your enemies turn away from you. The Lord is the King of Israel, he is with you. You will never again be afraid that others will calm you. The time is coming when people say to Jerusalem, Zion, don't be afraid, don't give up. The Lord your God is with you. He is a mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer punish you. Instead, he will sing for joy because of you. So I'm going to pray for us. And you may want to sing. You may want to just listen to the song, whatever you find helpful. Father, I thank you for your great love for us. Thank you that Jesus is alive. And that changes everything. Amen. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your is finished the end 
is written, Jesus Christ, my living Lord.
Amen. We're going to pray together and we let St Francis go through thank you sorry please so we start with our thank yous and then we say sorry and then we move to saying please so father we thank you for today thank you for Easter Sunday that Jesus is alive we thank you that you're a work in your world and you do not stand far off God we want to say sorry for those times when uh, through our thinking or stuff we say or stuff we do doesn't align with the way of the Lord Jesus and we thank you that through the cross you can forgive us and so we say sorry and we receive your forgiveness even now father we want to say please lord please would you continue to work in and through st francis we pray for your blessing on us as a church god we pray that you continue to um, bring people to know you father we pray that you would be at work on our estate comforting the hurting bringing joy uh, to the broken father um, breaking the chains of those who are addicted father for those who are mourning those who are in debt and we pray your blessing across this estate we pray for all the organizations working together we pray for our counselors lord for indukwe for gurav for john we pray your blessings on them father we pray for our pubs for the woodpecker for the bull and bush for uh, the kingsway and for all who drink there Pray God for our schools, for Brackensdale, for Rygate and Mapleview schools, and for Little House Nursery and Rydown Nursery. We pray your blessing on them and the staff and teachers, Lord, as they have a break over the coming weeks. We thank you for our young people that call this estate home. And Father, we pray for your world. We pray for the Ukraine and for the Middle East. Lord Jesus, we pray for our sisters and brothers for whom it's dangerous even to go to church on Easter Sunday. Lord, we thank you that one day you will make all things new. But Lord, we pray in these days that you would bring peace and healing. We're going to join our prayers together in the words of the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught us. We say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As I often say, um, we can pray about anything. <coughs> pray about anything. Um, it doesn't have to be global, but it can be. Sometimes people think, oh, it's too big to pray for. No, it's not. Sometimes people say, this thing's too little to pray for. I don't want to pray for myself. But the Lord's Prayer has both your kingdom come, global, want to see God's reign and rule in the whole earth, but also give me today my daily bread, which is personal needs. And so um, all of those things can be covered in prayer. Clive just said, afternoon, Clive, love to see you. Happy Easter, buddy. Um, yeah. And as I said earlier, Christ is risen and then your responsibility is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Right. We're going to look at the book of Mark. So um, there are lots of different, there's four different accounts of Jesus's life. And Mark is one of them. Looks a bit like this. Or at least this is what the ones we give out. If you haven't got one of these and um, have never really read things before, can I encourage you to take a copy of this or drop us a line and we would love to give you a copy of Mark. It's not too long. Uh, it's got pictures in it. And if you want the QR code, you can even scan that. That work. Yeah, give it a scan and um, go back to the YouTube and pause it. And you can listen to it if you're not much of a reader. You can download the Uversion app and... Um, or you could go to Bible Gateway. Okay, all the comments are coming in. Susie, happy Easter all. Beautiful, amazing. Louise, happy Easter to all. Guys, it's so lovely to have you with us. Um, and thank you for commenting as well. I suddenly saw our numbers jump up. So, so good. Right, I'm going to read just a short section of Mark chapter 16. And then I'm going to spend a few minutes unpacking it. So um, you can just listen or whatever you want to do. The Sabbath ended, Sabbath day ended. Mary Magdalene, <coughs> Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices. They were going to use them for Jesus's body. Very early on the first day of the week, they were on their way to the tomb. It was just after sunrise. They asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance to the tomb? Then they looked up and they saw the stone had been rolled away. The stone was very large. 
They entered the tomb and as they did, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe. He was sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified, but he has risen. He is not here. See the place where they had put him. Go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. It will be just as he told you. The women were shaking and confused and they went out and ran away from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Father, I ask that in these moments that you would open our ears to hear you. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favourite authors says no other religion started by saying, above all and before everything else, you must believe that these historical events happened. No other religion started by saying, above all and before everything else, you must believe that these historical events happened. And he goes on to say, certainly all the religions had origin stories and accounts of various heroes of the faith, but the stories were provided primarily as examples to follow. Their main message was live this way and you'll find the path of wisdom and you'll find unity with God. Christianity opens with not here's how to live, but here's what Jesus did for you in history. Christianity opens not with here's how to live, but here's what Jesus did for you in history. My favourite writer Tim Keller says that and Easter Sunday is the linchpin where we remember the resurrection of the very son of God, the one who was crucified on the Friday, dead and buried, placed in a tomb with a large stone over the front. And on the third day, we read about the women coming to the tomb and the stone was rolled away and the tomb was what well, Jesus wasn't there. Is this like Alice in Wonderland talking to the Queen of Hearts saying, uh, it says this, Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. And the Queen replied, saying, I dare say you haven't had much practice. When I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as, six, as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Is the resurrection like that? Well, yes and no. Yes, because people do not simply suddenly rise from the dead. It is physically impossible. And you don't need the modern science to know that. I think often we look back and go, oh, well, you know, they were ancient people. They didn't know. No, they saw dead bodies more than we ever do today. They knew what it meant for somebody to be dead and they knew how to kill people. It's physically impossible and it always has been. But also it's not like in believing six impossible things before breakfast. Because if there's a God and that God became human, in the person of Jesus, it's not impossible to believe that the one who created all things could breathe life back in like he did in the very beginning. And even if you don't believe that about God, there is some historical evidence to be weighed. You see, one of the interesting things is as we read this, and so often when I talk to people, they don't actually haven't actually read the Gospels, and I would encourage you, as I say, to listen to it or read it. Um, the philosopher William Lane Craig says the Gospel of Mark is simple and it lacks legendary development. So when you read it, it just it doesn't read with all this kind of embellishment about it. It, it doesn't even have lots of reflection on what it means. It just explains the events that happened. And as legends build up, often all these kind of embellishments, if you read some of the Gospels that didn't make it into the Bible, like the Gospel of Thomas, there's a talking cross and there's all sorts of weirdness that goes on, some weirdness and wackiness, which has been clearly added to the story. It was hundred, written hundreds of years later, which is one of the reasons it's not in the Bible. But the, as I say, the Gospel of Mark is simple and lacks these developments. The four pieces of evidence that we need to consider are there is an empty tomb. And nobody's ever got to explain why the tomb was empty. The Bible in the Gospel of Mark says that rumours were spread that the disciples came and stole the body. But of course, there were soldiers on the outside. There was a large stone over the front. And, and as we'll come on to in a minute, many of the disciples actually died for their faith, which means they would have been died, executed for something they knew to be a lie. The tomb was empty. Also, um, if you were writing, trying to start a new faith in the ancient world, you would not have had 
Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome going to be the first witnesses for the empty tomb. Sadly, the historian Josephus, who was a Jewish historian, said, uh, tells us that women's testimony at the time was not allowed in a court of law. Sadly, that was the case. So if you were trying to convince people that Jesus was alive, you would not start with female witnesses unless that was what really happened. Again, the appearances. So these these women in Mark chapter 16, they go in and they find the tomb empty, except they find a young man dressed in a white robe. And we read in other Gospels that these are angels. The angels don't just turn up as little girls with halos around their head and tinsel in the Christmas story. Um, here, one is like a young man dressed in a white robe. And he says, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene. He was crucified. So he really was dead. <coughs> But he's risen. He's not here. And if you're not sure, see the place where they had put him. So come into the tomb, see where he was. He's not there any longer. And in other Gospels, we hear about Jesus appearing to his disciples, women, men, large crowds. And of course, something enormous happened that this changed them. And if this goes on to the third point. So if one is the empty tomb, the second is the appearances and third, the early church. So what we can forget is we often think of the church as being powerful and um, kind of having lots of money. This was started by people who were not prominent. They were in an oppressed nation. But something happens to them. They go from being denying Jesus and scared of the consequences of following him when they flee because he's crucified to rushing out into the streets, sharing that Jesus is alive. And as I said earlier, many of them went on then to die for their faith. Now, they could have been mistaken, but they wouldn't have been lying because then they would have been executed for something they knew to be untrue. A similar thing is we find here that um, Jesus was buried on the Friday. They wait for the whole of the Sabbath until they come and put come to see if they can put spices on his body. The Sabbath for Jews is so important. They wouldn't break it even to go and look after um, the deceased Jesus. But something happened in those very, very early days <coughs> that meant that the Sabbath for Christians moved from being this, you know, this, the Friday night to the Saturday night to moving to the Sunday. And remember, all of those early followers were Jewish. This was unthinkable that they would move that special day. It required something unbelievable and, of course, required the resurrection of the Son of God. And fourthly, not just appearances of Jesus throughout history, but what we find today is two billion people say that they're Christians, say that they are followers in the way of Jesus Christ. The risen Jesus is still meeting with people today. And it's incredible. Like we we had this morning a lady who's been doing Alpha with us. If you've not heard of Alpha, it's an opportunity to explore um, the Christian faith. We gather together. We have tea and coffee. We watch a video. We have more tea, coffee and cake. And then we talk about it. There's a lady who came to Beer and Carols in the Woodpecker at Christmas. She came to the 9 p.m. Christmas Eve service. We then invited her to Alpha. She came to Alpha. And in the last 10 weeks, she would say her life has been flipped upside down by the living God. Like we shared, she shared this morning. It was beautiful to hear. Just incredible. But people throughout history and even today are meeting with the living God, the resurrected Jesus Christ. So we've got the empty tomb, the appearances, the early church, and now today people meeting with Jesus and have done throughout history. But you might be sitting there thinking, well, look, OK, so what? Jesus is alive. <laughs> that same writer I quoted at the beginning said, it is one thing to know about the resurrection. And it is another thing, as St. Paul in the Bible says, to know the power of his resurrection. What difference does this make? And this morning um, I shared that as a family, we have been got quite into um a TV show that's been quite popular over the last few uh, weeks. We have been watching Gladiators. We watched the final last night. Here we go. I'll just, I can't really make it work. So you can see it. This you can see. Oh, there we go. See my Gladiators t-shirt. So we've been watching Gladiators. And I said this morning at our all-age service, Easter Sunday is like the ultimate Gladiators. You see, there is a Gladiator that had never been defeated. 
my, my daughter actually came out this morning with um, a pugil stick dressed remarkably like Darth Vader, um, wearing uh, a vicar's robe. And she came out being the gladiator, sin and death. And sin is simply when we don't love others and we don't love God. So it's kind of, you know, not doing those things. Uh, and I said that sin and death has never been defeated. There's nobody who's lived a perfect life. So all of us fall short of God's standards, but also every single one of us is going to die. And so whether it be Adam or Abraham or Sarah or Ruth or Esther or David or John the Baptist, all of them lost to the gladiator sin and death. And last night was the final of Gladiators. And we had uh, contenders and one of them finally won the Gladiator. Well, two of them, actually, one man, one woman, won the Gladiator trophy. And so although all these people throughout human history have been defeated, defeated, heaven sent its champion in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ took on sin and death and it looked for a moment like he had been defeated. And yet on the third day, he rose from the grave. He defeated sin and death. As the women came to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. There was a man in there. He said, no, he is not here. Go and tell his disciples he is risen. He is alive. Jesus is alive. He is the ultimate contender. He is heaven's champion who has defeated sin and death. And the incredible thing is that if we put our trust in him, we too can know the victory over sin and death. We can have relationship with God now so we can be forgiven and have relationship with him. But we can also have relationship with him on into eternity. Death does not get the last word. That is the incredible news of the, of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus. That actually it's not something we earned. Jesus earned it for it found it for us and we get his trophy that is the incredible good news of easter in a nutshell there's so much more we can pull out and what i love here is that the angel says to the to the women says go and tell his disciples and of course they didn't really believe him and so they have to come and find out himself themselves and peter and if you know the bible story at all you know that peter is the one who promised that he would stay with jesus to the very end he would die with him even if he even if he had to and eventually, Peter finds himself denying Jesus. And of course, the angel says to the women, go and tell his disciples and Peter. And I can imagine them going to him and saying, Peter, going to his disciples saying, he's alive. Jesus is alive. You're not going to believe this. Jesus is alive. And Peter's in the corner thinking, oh, my goodness, I can't believe this. I, I denied him. I pretended I didn't know him. And then they pipe up and they say, Peter. He mentioned you. Go and tell the disciples and Peter. You can never have mucked up so much that there is not forgiveness through Jesus. If you ever think you've gone too far, I want you to come back to the person of Peter who denied Jesus after promising he would follow him to the death. Go and tell the to go and tell the disciples and Peter. There's always forgiveness. Jesus is the ultimate contender, and we get his victory. And friends, the beautiful thing about being at a church like St. Francis is we are seeing that month after month. People are meeting the risen Jesus and because he is alive. It changes everything. I'm going to pray. Father God, I want to thank you. That Jesus is alive, that he has defeated sin and death, that the tomb was empty. I want to thank you that you are still meeting people today and you want to meet with us even today. Lord, we love you and we worship you. Amen. from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
say <coughs> if um christian faith church all this stuff is a little bit new to you and uh you th or, or maybe you've been in church for years and years but you think you know I i'm not my understanding or my faith doesn't isn't, isn't where i'd like it to be and, and i but i don't know how to go further i feel silly asking um we, we we will be running alpha again which is what this lady has come to faith on that i shared about earlier on and a number of others have come to faith this last term two um we're going to be running that in the autumn time so uh, september october time we'll be doing that again but also we have weekly connect groups where people gather together they look at a bit of the bible pray together um and a number of them have people who are pretty new to church so they're still asking lots of questions um and and i know i said earlier but there genuinely is no such thing as a silly question like if you don't know you don't know you know the bible is 66 different books of different sorts of writing uh, the contents page is a great place to go if you um, are not sure how to find things the chapters are the big numbers the verses are the little numbers the bit before jesus's life on earth is the old testament the bit jesus's life and after um, is the new testament um, and it's full of letters and poetry and prophecy and history and biography there's all sorts of different things and i would always say it's the only place we have reliable information about god and it may be you think andy i didn't know any of that that's fine ask away you know what does amen mean it means let it be it's what we say at the end of a thank god you know let it be your will be done that kind of thing um what does hallelujah mean it means praise uh, there's all sorts of things that christians have language about but ask away and um, we'd love to share that with you. If you've got any specific questions, drop us a DM, drop us an email, hello at SDF Mackworth. Uh, we'd love to help journey with you um, in any way that we can. Friends, I'm gonna go and enjoy some late chocolate, I think for the rest of the day um, and get to switch off a little bit, but it has been such a joy to be with you. Um, really good just to celebrate the fact that jesus is alive now i need to see if we've got any things that i need to share about over the next little while so um what do i need to share about here we go 
we are part of a network of three churches, St. Werberg's in the city centre and St. Ed's in Allenton and Shelton Lock. We are gathering together on the 27th of April um, at St. Auckman's Church in Derby for the day. I think it's 10 till about seven in the evening. We're going to pray. We're going to worship. We're going to hear some really good stories of what God's doing and be encouraged. We would love you to join us for that. Um, if you drop us a DM, if you, if you get our weekly email, It'll be the link will be on there. If if you don't get our weekly email, um, drop us a DM or email. We'd love to send you the link through. Uh, if you want to get our weekly emails, go to our website, sdfmacworth.org, connect. I'm you, put your details in, um, and you'll get our weekly email. Other things in the summertime, we go to focus. Uh, Today is the final of the early birds. So if you want to come and camp with us and 8,000 others and celebrate Jesus over in Newark, 25th to, what is that? I can't even read that. 20, 25th to 28th, is that? Yeah, 25th to 28th. Um, you need to book up today. HTB. I can put it in the link actually. Let's, figure, let's see if I can find it. HTB focus. HTB. Basically, we're part of this. We're part of a Church of England church, but we are also part of a much wider network of churches across um, across the nation. There's about 170. I heard the latest count, and um, yeah, we, we we gather together for a big celebration. There will be a few day tickets available as well. Um, but if you join a team, you get it a bit cheaper. So is there anything else on here as well? Uh, stay connected. So if you don't follow us on social media, please do. Yeah, there we go. Amazing. I'm going to pray for us as we head on into the rest of the day. Father God, thank you again for Easter. Thank you that Jesus is alive. Thank you that in his death and in his resurrection, he has defeated sin and death, that we can be reconciled into a relationship with you both now and for eternity. I pray, God, that we might know your touch on our lives. And Lord, that you would bless us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Would it remain upon us and those who we love this day and always. Amen.